Water is important for everyone, for people as well as wildlife, as well as just the health of our environment. It's such a central thing, so it's important to have a group like us and groups like us across the province and across the country to be able to address these issues and to support the overall health of our watershed. So the Battle River Watershed Alliance is a nonprofit organization here in East Central Alberta. We work in watershed education, watershed stewardship, and watershed management. So the Battle River watershed is huge. It's 30,000 square kilometers, and it includes municipalities like the city of Lacombe, Pinoka, Wetaskiwin, and all the way to the Saskatchewan border. I think there's about 30 main municipalities and some summer villages that we work with. We're all in it together, right? This whole watershed region is connected by the water that we use. We all use the same water. We rely on each other to ensure that we're using it correctly and cleaning it well so that people downstream from us can also benefit from it. And so our, our big goal is to work with communities across the watershed. One, we want everyone to know what a watershed is and what they can be doing to making sure that they're doing their part. So what is a watershed? Watershed, noun, an area or region drained by a river, river system, or other body of water. When the Community Environment Action Grant opportunity came up in 2016, well, we had been exploring, well, what kind of projects would we want to take on around the topics of energy and climate change, which is a little bit beyond what we had been working on in the past, but the Battle River region is an energy hub. There's all kinds of energy projects that are around here. So it made sense for us to want to do something, educating our communities about climate change and the connections with our energy infrastructure. So we developed the Finding Common Ground project, and because of our experience hosting bike trips, we thought it would make a good fit. We haven't even started yet, and I've already got a flat tire. I'm in business. On the bike trip, we had about 25 participants take part in one or more days of the tour. We started in Camrose. We biked about 68 kilometers to Heisler, went to Forestburg for the evening. From Forestburg, we went down south onto Halkirk. On our third day from Forestburg, we went as far as Hardesty. It was about 186 kilometers altogether, stopping at seven energy production sites, and we had 17 guest speakers. We were able to visit a number of different sites everything from very large-scale energy production down to a solar operation at the farm scale, but learning more about how people are able to produce energy and provide that energy to maybe just themselves and maybe to a much larger thing like the Alberta Energy Grid. During the bike tour, people were, first off, I think amazed to see how many different types of energy production there already are. I've heard from some participants that they think that oil and gas is the only thing that's happening in Alberta, and so they were very surprised to see that there were so many renewable energy projects. To do this whole thing and only have 25 people attend, we wanted to be able to expand our reach. So we had a documentary filmmaker along for the ride. Her name was Alison Borlon from Radical Productions, and she was there with us and filmed the whole thing. She then had hundreds of hours of footage that she turned into a 25-minute documentary. We took the documentary and we screened it across the watershed to people from lots of different backgrounds. And then we were able to talk to them about the film and what we had learned on the tour, getting their opinions on the topics of energy and climate change and how we move forward. Part of the beauty of cycling on this trip was traveling at the slower pace. While on the road, we were left thinking about how we can reduce our own energy footprint, be it by eating local foods or using alternative energy methods. But overall, we were also thinking about this land, water, energy, and the communities that we share. 
Lockheed Center. <laughs> All of its beautiful solar panels. Oh yeah, it's pretty impressive, right? Yeah. Oh, this will be a great stop, I think. Yeah. It's a great visual for people to look at and really see the scale of some of these things. It's a really great visual example, like you can see the solar panels. We're excited to be hosting another round of Finding Common Ground. This time it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing it on a bus, keeping it more accessible for more people and touring a lot of the same facilities as well as some new projects, hearing about more energy projects, so how the energy producers are getting more efficient, as well as how people in their households or in their workplaces can be more efficient. We all need energy, and so how we produce it is, is what we wanted to be talking about. We should ask the city of Camrose if they can get for the tour to show us like how much energy they're producing between this solar panel array and the one at the recreation center and like see if yeah. we can calculate how many greenhouse gases are being reduced or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It'd be a nice interesting spot to see how a building like this that can use so much energy during the performances are collecting energy during the day, putting it into the grid and then pulling it from the grid whenever they need it. Mm -hmm. This kind of a project is a little bit out of the box for a watershed organization, an environmental organization. But I think we've always thought of our work as being, yes, looking at the ecological health of our region, but also wanting to look at the health of people in this region, the health of communities in this region. And so this kind of a project, this kind of a tour, really fits in with our goals of broadening that conversation to look at land, water, health of people, health of communities.